Yeah, hello everyone. So uh, we'll take 30 minutes to talk a little bit about experimentation and A-B testing. And I would really like to sh uh, share my experience at Spotify, which is now four years of doing A-B testing, doing experimentation, and the challenge of building a large-scale platform for it. So uh, how will this presentation look like? I would like us to get on the same page and just talk a little bit about some concepts of what is experimentation, why are we still using it. Then I would like to take you to a journey through uh, an experimentation use case that we have at Spotify and to see how it would look like to start and finish an experiment um, with, I guess, the infrastructure and the tools that we have. And uh, finally, I would like to tell you, so after we have this use case, we all get the view about what's challenging, how it looks like to A-B test, to just think about and uh, to acknowledge just the difficulty of and the challenge of platformizing experimentation. Okay, so about myself. So I started at Spotify around like more than four years ago. I'm now an experimentation research scientist. Job of my dreams. <laughs> So uh, I work with experimentation since I started. In the beginning, I was switching from product team to product team. What does that mean? So basically, when a team needed to launch experiment, maybe because they're sending emails, they wonder which emails are better, or they want to launch a campaign, they want to do a bundle with Hulu or with Netflix, they called a data scientist and asked them to, uh, asked them to help launch an A-B test. So it was really moving around the company and seeing like lots of A-B tests and maybe struggling with some things and uh, running A-B tests for different parts of the company. Then in 2017, I got really lucky to get on the experimentation platform team. So on the team who is building the platform that I was using before. And after evaluating this platform, we decided 2018 to basically do a big revamp and to change some underlying infrastructure in order to get just, you know, more usable, quicker, and more, more valid experimentation platform than what we had before. So uh, let me give you a little intro, right? What is experimentation? So when I talk about experimentation, I will talk about randomized controlled experiments, right? So what are these kind of experiments? Well, the idea is that the involved subjects are being treated mostly the same, except for only one deviation. Why? Well, it will help us isolate this uh, deviation and see what the effect is of that particular deviation. So uh, let me steal from the internet a very famous uh, A-B testing example. So here we have two pots, right? Just notice, the pots are the same size, they're made of the same material, they have the same type and same amount of soil in them, and we put the same type of bean seeds to them, 10 each. The only difference will be that we're adding water to one of them and not really watering the other one. So in the end, what happens, we will count how many seeds have sprouted. And basically, we can now contribute the effect of the number of seeds of sprouting to the water because we controlled for all these other variables. Very nice, right? But I mean, we have like lots of these ML algorithms now. We have big data. We have so many easy analysis toolkit. Why would we actually go you know, back to um, you know, launching these complex experiments, we really have to control for all variables, right? So I would like to illustrate it with a funny example. So let's, yeah, um, yeah, stay with me. <laughs> so let's assume that we have this insight. We see that the US spending on science, space, and technology is highly correlated with the suicide rates. So what would happen if we would just send this insight without uh, further explanation to the US government? I have an idea. <laughs> I bet they would get very upset and potentially um, panic and cut the US spending on science-based technolo technology in order to reduce the suicide rates. Do you think the suicide rates would really reduce? Maybe, <laughs> probably not. So uh, what happened here? So we made a correlational insight, which is, again, very interesting, but it's not a causal insight. We didn't claim, nor did we do anything to be able to claim that the you know, US spending 
the bigger the US spending will cause also an increase in the suicide rates, right? And, um, and we see if we would have a causal relationship here, it would be very useful because we would be able to decrease the suicide rate. So um, the causal insights are enabling us to act, to do a change and actually to expect a particular outcome, right? So then how do we get these causal insights? Well, it's very hard to get them, right? Some use, um, like smoking causes lung cancer. It's a meta-analysis of decades in order to be able to establish that relationship. Or uh, the golden standard would be also double-blind controlled trials. And in the digital world, we use them as online experiments. A specific version of them would be A-B tests. Okay. We're on the same page now. So uh, let's see the A-B testing user story. So uh, this will require a little knowledge. I don't know if you're all Spotify users or you use Deezer or Pandora. <laughs> but uh, actually, in your library, you will have your playlist. You can go in your library, check, and you'll get the list of playlists that you recently played. This is how we have it today, recently. And that's actually my list from this morning. <laughs> um, so the, play, the team who is maintaining and owning this playlist feature is wondering, can they actually help the users and improve? And maybe just showing the recently played playlist is not the best thing. Maybe we can have an algorithm to do this recency, recency and frequency in some kind of combination. So they're really curious about trying this recency instead of just frequent, or sorry, just recent, recent <laughs> recency versus recency. And uh, they expect some changes. They would really like an increased stream time of the users, every stream time, on the playlists. And as maybe a secondary metric, they're just really curious. They won't really make a big decision on it. But they're curious about what kind of interactions. So did the interactions with the new playlist view increase or not? So this is our scenario. So uh, for me particularly, what's here the problem? Um, I very often listen to acoustic throwbacks. I've been listening to it for months. Uh, but I've been in an exploratory phase. So just yesterday, I listened to all these other guilty pleasures playlists. And the acoustic throwbacks very quickly gets to the bottom. So I might want to see it, you know, even though I haven't listened to it yesterday, I would like to see it, you know, closer up to where my uh, top songs 2018 are. So uh, how does the A-B testing process look like? What do we need to go through this journey for this particular example to know, shall we roll out to everyone or shall we just abandon the idea? What's happening here? So we will start with the planning phase. It'd be very important to set up a hypothesis first, also do the infrastructure set, set up because think about it. We need to deliver this treatment. The algorithm needs to be implemented, needs to be delivered to the users just some users, right? Not everyone. And uh, after everything is set up, we will basically run the experiment. So we'll start the experiment, monitor, make sure everything goes properly, and then in the end, finish it. Finally, we will get some analysis of the results and some insights and make a business decision on the insights. Mm. So uh, when it comes to role, right, we have a nice process. Who does what? So before, when we even thought about where, what do you platformize, how do you platformize, what do you provide to you, it's important to ask who are our tool users, and these users are Spotifyers, right? So we see here P's for product manager, we have data scientists, and we have engineers. And we decided that we'll recommend, or each part of it, uh, will build for a specific user. And as you see, the product managers are kind of overarching. They start and they finish. They kind of own the experiment. And also in the middle, when there's not a lot of work, uh, they will be doing the monitoring as well. And the data scientist engineer will help in. Uh, this will increase the scalability, and this will ensure that we're A-B testing things that will make business impact. So let's start with creating a research hypothesis, right? So uh, what are we curious here? when we're creating the research hypothesis. Well, we want to know actually what we're testing at this stage. We should know what is the thing that we're interested to change. So this uh, frequency algorithm, how does it actually work? 
We're also interested in what e effects do we expect to see. Remember, we said the streaming time. We want users to listen to more playlists because now they're easier accessible, the ones that they're interested in. And also, very important, we don't want to reinvent the wheel. Did someone do this A-B test like three months ago at Spotify? We have to check. So we have to definitely um, you know, check our internal knowledge base and also talk to corresponding team just to make sure if they have any knowledge that we could use. Next step is select setup, right? So I believe it A-B testing <laughs> sound, might sound easy. So what's the rocket science in building a platform for this? So I think the complexity just creeps in into this step. So I broke it down to three different parts, right? In order to actually create a setup and to be able to you know, launch an experiment properly, we need to make sure that the treatment is delivered, is randomized, and is delivered at the right time to the right users, right? On their right devices. Also, we'll later go into the details, it's also important to be able to track what the users are doing on the app, in maybe specific on the playlist page, right? And in the end, to have a good metric which is measuring the success or failure. So, um, let's start with creating or selecting the treatment configuration. So um, think about it that uh, basically the treatment has to act like a configurable aspect of our client or backend services. So when we talk about client feature, think about like the layout changed, right? One button looks different, it's in a different play page or a place. And as a backend service, think about maybe we change something in our recommendation algorithm, we change something in your Discover Weekly or Daily Mix, right? Um, Furthermore, we have to have a vehicle to assure delivery of these experiences to the users. And uh, basically, we will need engineers to you know, declare and define these changes in their code. So this will be an engineering task. Uh, the second one is create select events. So this might not be immediately straightforward. What kind of events? You know, what do we mean when we talk? Well, it's, for example, when the user loads the page, called like page view, so we assume the user saw the page. Maybe the user scrolled down, maybe the user clicked, made some interaction with the page. And some of these uh, events exist, but some don't. Some you will need to create for your A-B test particularly. Why would you need to create it for your A-B test? Two reasons. You might need a custom metric. If you think about our example, and all the way down, so what's the second? We are curious if the user's interaction with the playlist sorting or the feature changed. So what if we don't have any events which define the user interaction? We will need to create in order to implement the second metric, right? And um, as a second point, so last but not least, right, it's the exposure. What exposure? So uh, we can't force everyone to see the treatment. We will have to check if they got exposed to it. So what if you're in the test, you're in the treatment group, you're in the test group, and one week you use the Spotify app, but you never open the playlist page. You won't be exposed, and we have to know that. We have to know that and basically not take you into account as being exposed in the experiment. So that's why logging UI interactions in order to track A-B test exposure is very important. Um, and finally, we come to basically create and select metrics. So uh, it's again very important to reliably have a set of metrics to be able to reuse the metrics and create the exact metrics that you need to measure the success of your experiment. And um, if you basically think back, all these items are reusable, so it's create, select. So in future A-B tests, you might want to reuse some parts of it. So we don't expect you really to create too often these things. Nice, we have a setup, we have a hypothesis, it's time to start the experiment. So, um, yeah, once everything is done, uh, what we can do is basically press start. Our experiment will be scheduled, right? At the right time, it will start, and it will randomly allocate, you know, treatment and control to the population that we chose. And this population is probably partly sp part of Spotify users. Um, monitoring should be done, even though everything was set up properly, but the question is like, the main question during monitoring, is the A-B test still valid, right? So what can go wrong? Uh, what can happen? 
it can happen that uh, for technical reasons, randomization didn't work out. So we want to see how many users are getting what. We want to see how the exposure rates are covered. You know, follow the crashes uh, that we have and just make sure everything is going fine. And then also monitoring will also tell us about like when is the time or are we ready to stop the experiment? So when is the experiment ready? So when the test is powered, right? So uh, by powered, I mean when we have enough users to try to fail the hypothesis. Enough users in order to control for the type two error because we definitely don't want too many false negatives. So this is a statistical process. So every A-B test has a chance to just be wrong, just by definition. Uh, being wrong, meaning to show positive result, oh, you see an increase, but actually there's no increase. You got unfortunate in the randomization. Or you see no effect, but actually there is an effect. So it's very important to control for the false positives and for the false negatives, right? And the power is here to control for the false negatives. Um, furthermore, some metrics will need longer calculation time. Maybe we need what happens to the user after one week. So that metric, by definition, is a one week long metric. And finally, um, user behavior differ differs heavily if it's workday or weekend. So we want to give people the chance to you know, interact and behave on all days of the week. So it should be multiple of seven. Nice. So our experiment is ready. It finished. So uh, now is the time to experiment, uh, to evaluate basically the result, the results, and then to make some insights. So, uh, so first it's important to see, is, it, is the experiment still scientifically feasible? Was there any interaction with another experiment that ran at the same time? Was there any seasonality which might you know, magnify or decrease our results? So we have to check for these things. And after that, the data scientists, so we do need data scientists to actually make the insights and present the insights to the team of the experimenters and to the PMs. Mm. So uh, great, the insights are done and it's time to make a business decision. So. Um, by examining the results, we will be able to decide, or the insults will tell us, if we measured statistically significant increase, right, of the group who got the treatment compared to the group who got the control. So what are the potential business decisions we can take here? Um, we can notice maybe that the frequency, right, <laughs> sorting, is uh, really improving the streaming time. Remember, that was our first metric. And uh, we might want to roll it out to everyone because it's such a great thing. People love it. We could have the second chance. The test can indicate that maybe there's a change, but it's way too small. So uh, we might want to iterate on the sorting algorithm. We want to do further testing and make sure you know, we improve it to a level where we can show some significant impact. Or finally, it can also have a negative impact. And then basically we want to roll back to control and to make sure we stop the test. On, or the people who got the treatment now come back and get the control. So let's say in this case that, uh, great, the first thing is so we managed to increase the stream time and we will roll out this feature to everyone. So this is the business decision that we can make from the A-B test. And this is the process it took us to make that business decision. Uh, what does it mean for me? So maybe from next week, <laughs> when I take a look at my playlist again, I'll see my acoustic throwbacks higher up compared to the sporadic recent things that I listened. And I might then stream more because it will be more accessible. So uh, yeah, we ran through a scenario. We started an A-B test from start to finish and made a business decision on it. Now, uh, the question is, how can we add the platform and in what parts, how do we add, what's the challenge in to, imp to improve the A-B test, to make sure that we can A-B test with less resources more frequently and that we have less chance of having incorrect results. So um, we, let's say, yeah, the past year, 2018 and 19, we really worked a lot to build basically solid, uh, you know, fundamental experimentation and instrumentation platform for Spotify for basically for internal users, we really want to enable them to, you know, be able to test more and to be just more successful with any kind of updates or features we're rolling out. 
So uh, remember the process. I just simplified a little bit the process and put it in one line. Research, think a little bit about uh, background study to do before. Think about like having the hypothesis, then the design and the setup. Here, think about it, configuring everything, setting up. Then we have running monitoring, the result evaluation, and business decision. So uh, we wanted to, as I said, add a platform under it and basically identified what are the parts that are easy to automate, where we can cut back a lot of engineers, mostly, and data scientists' time, and basically platformize these parts and uh, help the users do it, right? So um, in order to enable this platform, we, we definitely saw that uh, you know just to have a basic A-B testing platform, you actually will to have to have some instrumentation under some pillars, and these pillars have to rely on proper infrastructure under it. And uh, the infrastructure would be some basics, not just for A-B testing, but we have to have the basics someplace in order to build uh, the whole tool. So again, first is just the A-B testing itself, then we have the pillars, which we need. The pillars are reusable for other things as well, and then the basics. Um, so. I would like to go through a little bit these and tell you maybe a little bit about uh, for each one, as we had this structure, uh, what do we struggle with, right, when we were building this. So when it comes to the experimentation platform, um, it's very important uh, to have a process. So the tool itself has to follow the process for the user. If the tool is very easy to misuse, uh, people will really easily, for example, do p-value hacking, you probably heard about it, not set proper hypothesis. So we really believe that, you know, the flow that I presented to you, that, you know, the platform has to follow that flow. And even when you follow that flow, the, you know, UI of the platform can't really, is not bulletproof. So we decided to provide advanced workshops in combination. So people know what are the risks of misusing, right? Getting a wrong result in the end and ruling out something to, <laughs> you know, global Spotify users, that's actually bad. <laughs> um, okay, that's great. So remember we talked about events, right? Instrumenting exp exposure events. So before, people who started the app got automatically exposed to an A-B test or they were calculated as exposed, right? So think about an A-B test on the home page, right? Open my phone, app starts, I kind of land on the home page. So I'm close, right? It's close that I'm exposed. If you did any change on the home page, might be fine. How about we made some change, as in our scenario, on the playlist page? And every time I start the app, I'll be calculated as I, I was exposed to the treatment. So uh, that's, for example, a failure, right, of the A-B test. The A-B test will show you powered, insignificant results. It will show you valid results, right? But insignificant, even though you have significant results, because these people who w were not exposed, these users, got actually logged as exposed. So um, now we have, basically, we allow uh, users to build their own specific instrumentation based on the A-B test, right? Um, so, but in order to have that piece, we need to have just generic and reliable events. So what do I mean by that? So you can imagine that every feature team who is building one Spotify feature could basically have their own type of events, their own page views, which are kind of logged differently than another feature team's page view. So they're not really compatible because edge cases, what when you're offline, right? How do we log it then? Um, and now basically it's very important to unify across our products and to make sure that all feature teams follow the same standards and that they do ensure, you know, monitoring of the loss of these basic, basic events that we can then use for experimentation instrumentation. Okay, how about the configurable treatments, right? So um, also it's very important to, you know, you have to know if you really managed to deliver the treatment to the users or not, or the treatment failed. And you want to make sure that you don't deliver the treatment to the control, right? So you want to have a very, you know, very good, uh, very precise way of delivering this treatment to the users and to think about edge cases, like again, what if the users are using the app offline and so on. Uh, but in order to have that, 
basically our products have to have uh, configurable application and services. And, uh, you know, so every feature or everything that we're updating or building needs to have an easy way of switching things on and off in the code. Um, we also need to have right metrics. So before we really struggle, because the data scientists each time were defining in their notebooks, okay, I want this metric, so let me implement it. There was no, um, you know, no place where like uh, you could reuse, access the metrics or reuse the metrics. So you know you want to use the same metric that you used three months ago. And sometimes you can use different data sets to calculate the same metric, right? But the different data sets will give you, again, slightly different results. So it's quite important to basically provide metrics to the experimenters where they can reuse their own or, you know, interchange, exchange and even, you know, like rate each other's metric and use them for different purposes. But of course, in order to have the metrics, we do have to have a scalable data warehouse solution, which luckily we had from early on. So, um, yeah, so this is basically our solution that we came up for scalable experimentation. There, once the fundamentals and the basics are up, there are actually many fun things you can do on it, but it's not fun to work with something that's really, you know, unreliable, or just hard to track. So, um, yeah, I want to tell you that um, we live in the golden age of experimentation. Think about in medicine. It's very hard to run randomized controlled trials. We basically have no governmental restriction, no controls to test on users as like all digital products. Uh, so I believe that, yeah, we should use that. We should develop it farther and uh, learn from it as much as we can. Thank you. <laughs>